Hi all, we haven't done a tutorial for Twixter for AE and Premiere for a while, so in this tutorial we'll see what's new or different in Twixter 7 running on Premiere Pro and After Effects 2020. We can just jump in and start with this long sequence I shot with the GoPro of Venice Beach at the pier just before sunset. We imported the clip into Premiere Pro and we'll create a new sequence from clip and apply Twixter 7. Make sure to download the latest version of Twixter to follow along with this tutorial. Before getting started, we can right mouse click on the timeline and scroll down to time interpolation and make sure it's at frame sampling and not frame blending. This also appears in Premiere Export and Adobe Media Encoder. Since Twixter uses optical flow, we don't want to introduce frame blending here. This is particularly important if you start to play with frame rates. In Adobe Applications, an effect has a local time independent of where you are on the timeline. Internally, it always starts at frame zero, the first valid frame of the input clip. This is great as you can slide the clip, change the endpoint, etc., and nothing slides. So as in previous versions of Twixter, once you're inside the effect, the first valid frame of the clip is always frame zero of the input clip, no matter where the clip is physically placed on the timeline. Even when you move the endpoint, Twixter still recognizes the previous frames internally. This way, when you change the endpoint, nothing changes. Keeping that in mind, the classical way to make sure your start frame was on a particular frame was to change the endpoint and for speed set a keyframe at 100% on the current frame or do the equivalent in a nested comp by sliding the clip to be on a desired start frame. That would tell Twixter to make your first frame something other than frame zero of the clip, since the speed is relative to that first frame. Then on the following frame, you would set the rate change, for instance, 50%. This is the old way to do this, and it still works, but there's a new way as of Twixter version 7. Now in the new version, we can use source time offset. First you change the display to source and then we can go to the source time offset and scrub through to the frame that we want as our first frame. Now when we change the speed on the first frame, it keeps the frame we want as the first frame. So internally, Twixter now recognizes this as the first frame. It's really useful now with a long sequence because it's likely we have enough frames to do our slow-mo without going into nested sequence land and adjusting the speed a bit won't change the first frame. Now I want to do an effect to make everything very fast, like a time lapse, but with a segment I choose in the middle, that's slow-mo. I would start with a very large speed value. So we make a keyframe on the first frame of 2000%. And then about 10 seconds later, we make a keyframe of 10%. We can expand the effects control to see our keyframes. I can right mouse click on any of these keyframes directly and choose the type of frame interpolation. I will choose continuous bezier, but the type is not important for this example. We can see the keyframes in the thumbnail and adjust interactively. It's a little more difficult to select a particular section we want in slow-mo using speed percentage, so we can switch output control to frame number. I can make sure the timeline display is set to display frames and I'm going to temporarily move my clip to the start of the timeline so the frame counter is the same as in Twixter. Once our animation keyframes are set, I could move it anywhere on the timeline. If the timeline doesn't start at frame zero, the default, you can temporarily change it by right mouse clicking and select start time or nest the clip and work on a subsequence. We can see a visual representation of the clip as a thumbnail within the timeline if we right mouse click on the thumbnail, I can see more options here where it says show clip keyframes and Twixter. Right now we have a straight line from the first to the last frame without any retiming yet. Now I can locate a section of interest, in this case the girl walking her dog, and I go to the frame where the girl first appears and I set a keyframe of that current value, 971. Next I go to a frame where the girl disappears from the frame and I set another keyframe at frame 1395. There is still no retiming as we're putting the same values as the timeline, but we have our retiming marks. We can go to the middle of the sequence where the girl is about midway passing through and set frame 1110 as a keyframe. Now we still have a null twixter, but we have three keyframes of interest. I can do the same a bit further down the timeline where there's a scooter going through. 
I already set the keys to save some time, but we will review them. We have the frame before the scooter enters the frame, and the last keyframe where the scooter leaves the frame. And I set the center keyframe. Now we have another set of keyframes here. I'm going to take the second segment of keyframes and move it closer to the first segment. Doing this will speed up between the two slow-mo segments. I do this in the effects control window as doing it in the timeline risks shifting the values. To create the slow-mo segments, I can take the keyframes that were the in and out points of interest and move them away from the center keyframe. This will create a slow-mo for these two sections. Now I can condense the clip by dragging the last keyframe near our second set out point. I could move this whole clip anywhere on the timeline now if I wanted. Of course it would work better if we could control the speed ramping with a curve. Remember we can right click and set interpolation, but it's a little harder to use in Premiere with expected results as you can't see the large animation graph like in After Effects. Linear might do a sudden speed change, and Auto Bezier can make the curve suddenly go downwards, which would make some of the action reverse, since the curve dips down. We should use Continuous Bezier for this example. So let's see another new thing in Twixter 7 to finish this off. We can save our Premiere project. So apart from this example, if I'm the editor and I retime the whole shot, I can save it and hand it off to After Effects. I can open after Effects, and I go to File, Import, Import Adobe Premiere Pro Project. I can open the previously saved Premiere Pro Project, and all of the speed animation curves that I saved will be there. Before Twixter 7, this did not work. You would get values all incorrectly mapped. Now we can adjust our speed ramping here a little more easily. While we're here and we're doing a speed up, we could also add motion blur compensation as an additional effect, separating the transition between our two main events here. That is optional. It will add motion blur only in the sped up section. This is how we can interactively retime using the curves and integrate with After Effects. Okay, let's exit AE and go back to Premiere. Another thing to know is you use After Effects and Premiere in conjunction, although not all tools work in both apps. You can grab the clip that has Twixter applied and right mouse click on the clip in the timeline and select Replace with After Effects Composition. Voila, now After Effects opens by itself with the effect applied and all the right values. You've created a dynamic link. You can now pile on some more effects and layers and render directly from Premiere Timeline. This has been part one of some of the features in Twixter, in addition to some of the new features found in Twixter 7 running on Premiere Pro 2020. Please watch part two for the rest of the new features. <laughs>